Actually, what shall happen with the world? You see, we are all under the impression that we are heading towards eerie times. When I was still young, so around 1900, the people still believed in the advance. The Emperor Wilhelm had said, I lead you into glorious times. We all believed that, the whole world. We are heading for glorious times. No one believes this any longer. Well, my friends, the Bible gives very clear information to us what we are to expect. The Bible says, the world does not head for more and more glorious times. There is not more and more advance, but this age heads towards an end. Namely, an end with all kinds of catastrophic emergences. The Bible says that after the world's history has run for a long time, suddenly a time sets in, which I want to call the age of perplexity. The problems grow over our heads. We are not getting done with the things. This will be a time where the political problems will not be mastered any longer. One people will be indignated against one another, and one kingdom against one another. Thus says Jesus, there has never been a time where such senseless amounts had been put into a frenzied rearmament. It is as if we would not master it any longer. The world cries for peace, and we rearm to keep the peace, and surely slide into the next war, right? It is horrific. The second trait of this age Jesus calls the economic perplexity. He describes it this way, there will be famine and expansion. But listen carefully, nowadays in the world there is so much food that all the world could be satiated. And there are so many possibilities of the world economy that it is no problem to feed India, for example. And despite this circumstance, more than half of the humanity starves. Why? Yes, why? Thus it's written in the Bible. There never have been so many macroeconomists than nowadays, but humanity starves. And the third trait of perplexity in this last age that Jesus names is the religious perplexity. It is horrific nowadays. How many Christian confessions are there? And then we just had started with the Christian ones. Now there come the Muhammadans, Islam. There you say, what shall we still believe? What shall we still believe? There you say, it will come even worse. This Jesus also predicted. Jesus says, they shall say, lo, here is Christ, there is Christ. In socialist Germany, they depose God. Now the superstition comes around. Look in the Bible, there is a great word it reads. Because the people did not like to believe the word of truth, God will send them strong delusions. The Bible disappears in the houses, now the people must believe nonsense. Now they run from one to the next. Where is the truth? They do not know the joyful gospel any longer. Main thing, off the center of the cross of Jesus. Just anything that does not give peace. You know, just away from the Savior. Because the people did not like to believe the word of truth, God will send them strong delusions. And then, when the time of perplexity, this last time has reached up to its peak, then the next section comes that is noticeably different. That perplexity of the people must be manifest. They want to live without Savior. Now they must see, without me you can do nothing. And then, then, when the perplexity has reached its peak, then arrives the Antichrist. Since the Bible says about it, when the perplexity has been fulfilled, then once more a world dictator arrives and says, now I take things into my hand, and he takes them into his hands. The political perplexity he rids by saying, to me has been given all power. The economic perplexity he reads by simply distributing the bread stamps to the whole world. Then to everyone is being distributed his quantum. And from the one not following the bread stamp is being withdrawn, then you can starve. Thus says the Bible, whoever does not follow cannot buy nor sell any longer. The religious perplexity he reads by saying, everyone believes in me, 
and takes my mark upon forehead or hand. You see, our Savior had come from above, out of the world of God. The world rejected him. He is a building block that they did not want. Now they must have the Savior from below. And the masses will fall for him. Why do we care about it? We care because the Bible clearly says that this Antichrist will suffer anything except for one thing. He will not suffer. That Christians will be there that say, we do not receive your mark because we already have a Savior who has come from above, Jesus. Then, says the Bible, the last great persecution of Christians is coming. And how many Christians will be there that will say, yes, hail Antichrist, I can still believe in Jesus next to it. This simply will not be possible. And when he has reached up to the top of his power, the next section comes. Then Jesus comes back. For this the believers will wait then. Then Jesus comes back in a way that everyone sees and realizes. The Bible does not know from Jesus coming back totally secretly. He cometh with clouds of heaven, and all kindreds of the earth shall see him. And Jesus is God's last word. To whomever does not receive Jesus into his life, God does not have anything to say anymore when the judgments come. And then they maybe cry out to God. Then everyone will be glad when he had not received the mark of the Antichrist. The thing that impresses me always in this tremendous picture is that the Bible very plainly only knows two kinds of people in the end. Lost ones and saved ones. Let me say a word to the lost ones. Once someone mocked, it must be a comical God of love that throws millions of people into hell. Then one answered him, you are mistaken. God does not throw millions of people into hell. But this way we choose on our own. God will all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And therefore he offers them the salvation in Jesus. If they were unbelievers, stuck up till the neck in sin, if they straightway resisted, Jesus, who can forgive all sin on the cross, waits for them. God offers the Savior to everyone, everyone. Say, I have sinned, Lord. I throw down my sins under your cross and give my life to you, and you have come into the light. God will have all men to be saved. The way into hell we choose on our own. And hell is not an imaginary construct with flame and fun and devils and whatnot, but it simply is a place where God does not look any longer. You can be godless in eternity. This is hell. And I would like that I can tell it to you much more impressively how beautiful it is to be property of Jesus. There you are not saved in eternity, but already here you have come into a glorious sonship with God. And I say it again, around Jesus it simply is beautiful. Simply beautiful. I speak out of experience, my friends. I was godless and became a believer. I had thought the sins of the world would be beautiful, but around Jesus it is beautiful. Under his cross it is beautiful. Being allowed to unload your debts, having peace with God, to have a helper, having joy, surely having hope of the eternal life. Around Jesus it's simply beautiful.